Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, if most of you remember yesterday, we had some problems. I'm hopefully, I'm really hoping a lot of connection problems are actually resolved today. Um, but that's all fingers crossed. Um, I still think I, my video is lagging a bit. I am not sure about uh, audio. If someone can let me know if I'm still lagging, because I know that was a problem yesterday. If so, I might just disable my video and run like this. Um, this does have its advantages, right? I can go into like full screen mode so you guys can see everything. Um, but yeah, welcome to Let's Build Python Part 2. Um, today, actually, since the slides and everything is actual functional, we might do a really quick uh, brief overview and catch up of things we already went over. Oh, that's a bit big. Let's see, is there a better mode for that? No, there's so many different modes and they're all different sizes. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna go with this one for now and then we can move as needed. And I'm just trying to lower the load on uh, my system until I can figure out what is really going on and what is like causing all the issues. Um, but yeah, again, good morning and welcome to uh, Python part two. And hello, welcome to the chat. Yeah, and we're actually gonna make it so it is just the screen. Okay, cool. Um, so I hope you can still hear me. So uh, this is what you would have actually seen yesterday if everything worked and um, we didn't get run into technical difficulties. So, hey, I'm Kev, I'm a coach here at Majorly Hacking. I use the he, him, him, the he, him, his pronouns and I do a lot of different things. So feel free to talk to me about anything. So a schedule overview, we already did some of this, which is set up for success. What is Python? The type of programming language Python is. Hello, 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 welcome to chat. And like the basic, uh, essentially coding and building blocks for Python. But I'm gonna click through this a lot just so you gotta see what we didn't get to see yesterday. Hello, hello, welcome to chat. So yeah, what is Python? Python, again, is high level programming language. We talked about this. It is used in web development, scientific computing, data analysis, artificial intelligence. It was released in 1991 uh, by Wordle Van Rossum or however you wanna pronounce that name. I'm gonna be really bold, actually. This might totally backfire on me, but I really like to generally have background music for my viewers, so it's not just me talking. I'm gonna hope this works. I know it's working, I just don't think it's it's too well quality, but that's okay. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome back again. Glad to have you guys here. Okay, but yeah, so as I was saying, we're just gonna click, uh, quickly through some of the slides we looked at yesterday. Um, and I turned off my camera to so just really ensure that we have no quality issues as I'm still resolving some network um, difficulties on my end, uh, but yeah. So we went over what type of language Python is yesterday. So it's a interpreted language. Code is executed line by line rather than compiled to machine code. I love this, by the way. Oh, I got so tied up in the technical difficulty I forgot to say. Make sure you check into the stream. Uh, that's how you're going to get uh, all your credit for attending today's stream. I'm going to drop the check-in link real quick. I also love the dinosaurs. Um, don't know where you got those from. Wonderful creation. And then I wonder if I'm not going to be sure to ask me anything as I'm going along. Feel free to stop me at any time to ask any questions, especially uh, throughout the review session. If you're joining us new and weren't here yesterday, uh, we're doing a really quick review because I couldn't have slides ever said due to technical difficulties, but today we can. Um, but yeah, uh, let's keep going. So um, there's a lot of third uh, party libraries available in Python, right? So we talked about some of them before, which is like NumPy, we have um, Matplotlib. And we have pandas and like m many many others like uh, scikit-learn, OpenAI Gem, and um, many others. But yeah, we also started talking about data types in Python, right? So what is a data type? We talked about how it's a classification of data. It determines what type of operation can be performed. How data is stored in memory, size, format, range, and um, all sort of different things. 
We also talked about numbers, right, as a data type. So we talked about there being integers, floats, and complex number. We really don't use complex numbers. So our focus is really going to be on integers and floats, right? So if we need a, a decimal accuracy, we utilize floats. If we don't, we look at integers. We talked about strings, how it's a sequence of characters, and it is enclosed in either single quotes or double quotes, indicating that it is a string, right? For example, hello world, or well, what's up? And hello world is technically a string consisting of characters. Um, in some program languages, they don't actually have such ideas of strings. They only have characters, which you can utilize in a string way. And as, um, I guess, program languages got more abstracted, uh, we started creating more advanced classes from characters called strings. So in some programming languages, the actual building blocks are essentially a class of data called characters, and that can form strings. But in Python, we just call it string. Okay, so Boolean, we talked about how it's being true and false values and all that fun stuff. And then we did talk about list, right? So it's a, it's the stores, a collection of elements. It is, uh, it's generally listed are in ordered which means you can have one duplicates in a list and two, the first element of a list is at zero and you can move th throughout the list by telling it what order it is at. It is in Python declared by the square brackets and you separate each element with commas. So here's the stuff we did not get to cover because of a, a, a tiny bit of hopping due to uh, technical difficulties. Uh, it is a tuple, right? A tuple is an ordered pair. Uh, they're generally immutable. Uh, they are a locked pair. Well, again, what immutable means uh, essentially is, I actually forgot to cover this, is lists are immutable, which means you can change the contents of a list after it has been created. Tuples are basically lists, but they're unmutable, which means once you created it, you can no longer change it. And that's how you have to keep it, right? So uh, um, elements of a tuple can't be modified or deleted. You would still be able to reference them in terms of the index values, but they can no longer be modified or deleted. And if you think about it, there's use cases for such things, right? When you want to create something and you want to tie it together, it should never be changed. You might want to create a tuple. For example, I might want to create a person's ID badge, right? So like has their name um, and maybe not their name. Maybe I, it has their like social security card, uh, their health. Uh, so it's things that really should never be changed. And if it needs to be changed, you just, just create a new tuple. A set is an unordered collection of unique elements and in general defined by curly braces of the set function. These are really great if you need to do some sort of um, checking for if it's uh, if it's something is in a list, right? If something exists or not, because a set optimizes uh, your ability uh, to check if something is in a list uh, since it is unordered and it's unique elements, which means if it's in the list, you don't have to check through every single item. It would be at the set location. And um, the only difficulty is it's, it's being on order, but it, there's optimizations you can do around things like that. But set is definitely really useful and um, especially in ideologies of set theory. Okay, dictionaries, this is the one we didn't get to talk about. I mean, we did kind of talk about it, but essentially it is also an unordered collection, but it uses the idea of key value pairs, which means every time you provide a dictionary, a key, you're able to pull out a value. And this is also known as associative arrays, math for hash tables and other program languages if you're coming from those. Uh, but yeah, so going a tad fast, just blowing through some content we kind of already talked about. We talked about how to check data types, right? Using the type function or method, uh, whatever you prefer. Uh, we, we got some, we displayed something, we played with data types a tad bit in a replet, which if you don't have set up yet, um, it's a really good idea to get set up as I am doing some review of what we covered already. Um, here is the Replit link, right? So if you don't have a Replit account, go to uh, replit.com, create an account. Replit essentially is a development sandbox that allows you to work with coding stacks, especially uh, of any, I guess, size and uh, for however long, really. But it is actually really, really good for beginners because you get to play with uh, the whole entire tech stack without necessarily need to stand up everything on your own, on your own computer. Excuse me. And that, so we talked about values, right? So we talked a bit about value being the basic building blocks of data, right? So values essentially just uh, the actual data that fits each data type, right? So it can be assigned to variables or pass along as arguments to functions. Values can take on various form, like any of the data types we talked about before. And the fundamental elements of Python. Actually, wait, I just realized a tad problem. Um, 
I'm going to do this so it doesn't cut off on the screen, but uses yeah, use it extensively to data manipulation, control flow, and other aspects of um, programming. We talked about variables. How essentially it's just name given to memory location where the data is stored. It's just a way to refer to the value by a name. And so you can use it throughout later. In Python, you don't need to declare the variable. It uses something called dynamic typing, which means it infers the type of uh, the type of the variable from the value that has been assigned. And we talk about the benefits and negative of that. Again, feel free to stop me anytime to go over anything you might not understand. Or if you're new or you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. And uh, for anyone who's new that's joining me, cameras temporarily off as they deal with some issues. Um, so that last newest chat, I have no clue if that was like a, you hit your keyboard and it just went all the way through or something. Um, okay, here's the new stuff and here's what we're going to pick up. New stuff that we did not discuss. So we talked about a lot of the basic. Now we're just going to cover the idea of operators, right? So what are operators? Operators are essentially our special symbols used to perform different types of operations on values and variables. You can use the operator on the values itself. You can use operators between variables. And one of the key things here is that operators are great, um, but they are type defined, right? So essentially you cannot perform all operations or all data types, right? So uh, a good example is to add, if you're trying to do addition and you are using the arithmetic operator addition, you will not be able to use it uh, between strings because it, it is, uh, it, it, you mean you could, theoretically you actually could, but we're gonna, let's say we took out all the educations, we didn't actually program it and we say addition is only a mathematical concept. Uh, and we can't add strings together, then if you add two strings together, in Python, it actually works because we do other things around it, right? We quantify things back down to numbers uh, since that uh, in computers, everything is actually just classified as uh, numbers, right? Everything is represented. We see it all in this nicely formatted way, but to the computer, actually everything you see is just number. So it does work, but long story short again, uh, sorry for the tangent, is that when you uh, arithmetic, uh, arithmetic operations are generally reserved for number type uh, data types, so like your inheritors and your floats. Also, hello, welcome to the chat. So let's look at some of the arith uh, arithmetic operators, right? So some of the common arithmetic operators you might encounter are to perform mathematical calculation or addition, which you can take uh, adds two operands. Operands are just the numbers or data points to the left or right of it. Um, I hope that's not true. Uh, I'm not going to put that on the screen. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Uh, it was highly not recommended. If that is, I would recommend you, uh, change your username. Um, if you can see that in chat, you know, I'm talking about, I don't know if that is legitimately that, but yeah. So subtraction subtracts one operand from the other, right? So it's your operand are just the actual data you're working with from subtracting. You have multiplication, which you use a star for. You have division, you use one uh, forward slash, no, backslash, backslash, backslash. Yes, backslash, oops. Um, can show some X in code? Yes, we will move over to a code session where we will play with all that. And as uh, our chat plays Hunt for the Murderer, um, I will ignore that for now, but yeah, so a floor division, which you use uh, back, uh, backslash, backslash, we have modulars, we have exponentials, right? So modulars essentially is this, so division gives you both the remainder and the actual uh, value you get, right? Floor division gets you the only whole integer part of the result and it's rounded to the nearest integer. Modulus gets you the remainder part of the result. And now we get to the fun part, which I can't recall if I have slotted in here. Yes, right, hands off arithmetic operators. So we can actually play around some of this stuff and you can see it in action. If internet doesn't die on me today, this should be a pretty smooth day. So for everyone who oh, hopefully you can see, I'm gonna do something crazy real quick as I am talking is I'm going to create a new view essentially as uh, as uh, as the stream is actually live. I don't know if you can see me modify the actual view as the stream is live. 
So welcome to Stream Building 101. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure things are big enough for everyone to see. Actually, I'm going to describe the exchanges real quick, and I'm going to just zoom in so you can see. There we go. Okay. Uh, that might be a bit too zoomed. So, okay, cool. There we go. That's a good viewable size. Um, hello. Welcome to the chat. And uh, I don't suggest you uh, randomly call people, but uh, the recommendation is if you think that is your phone number, recommend a change. Yes, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Cool. Is that, that that's legible, right? Um, any more Zoom we need to do? Again, um, if you have not gotten, this is our replit from yesterday where we call a uh, repel. This is our repel from yesterday. So if you don't have one, just go ahead and create one. Essentially, it's pretty easy. You just go ahead and go, uh, you, when you're on the repel page, you just go create. And then you just create a Python one and um, there's a number. I cannot forcefully change someone's um, username, um, but um, but yeah, I do again. It, it is against rules and regulation. Um, to have people mess uh, to have people uh to have people mess with their, their actual or release any personal information it is against like rules and regulations and spare your personal or your pii information and if you do think you have shared it we can try to uh, remove it from chat uh but yeah sorry i i because like, i just can't actually kick the user or anything it is um twitch so if they, it is your pii please go ahead and modify username yourself um but yeah that is the unfortunate part i will go ahead and see what the key thing is just not to draw attention to it right um okay cool uh so what we're talking about is is here you can see our code so we're going to work with earlier uh we're actually going to play around in the console real quick because right we talked about how arithmetic operator can both use um both side uh you can um use as both of them as data right so for example we can so one of them so one plus one one is two. I hope we all know how to do that. If we don't, I would be genuinely concerned. Like two plus two is four, and so on and so forth, right? And then we also have difference one. Um, let me know if I am getting somewhere in my Wi-Fi connection isn't wonderful, which I don't know why at all at this point. Um, Supposedly, I don't have stable Wi-Fi connection, but I don't know why. No quick. Uh, then we have, have uh, uh, let's say, a flow, right? The reason a flow is, but if you don't want the flow, you want just an uh, actual whole number where in it, you can do four mod mod two. I mean, four uh, uh, integer divide. If there is a lag. Mm, yeah, I might have to call my ISPS again and um, go ask what the heck is going on. But thank you for letting me know. So you can do since we don't get a remainder of zero. Uh, but yeah, and then you also have what we also talked about, which is exponentials. Uh, so for example, two, two square is four. four two cube is eight and uh, so on and so forth mm, no, really not sure i feel like i've never had any of this problem until i upgraded my internet which is the funny thing to me but uh, we're gonna get back to slides and hopefully this also so fix my audio a tad bit and if I really need 
to. Uh, Audio is still lagging. Okay. Give me one second. This. So it, it is a downgrade and not an upgrade. Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me? Is it so lagging?
Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? This is crazy. Um, I I never upgraded my internet ever again. Um, I hope you can hear me now, and I am actually back. Um, so I'm gonna throw this back on the slides, and we're gonna advance to slide twenty six. So um, welcome back. If uh, you can still hear me, I uh, hope you can hear me now. Let's see. Let's get this back. Rolling. Hopefully this is smoother. I did resolve some of the issues, question mark. Okay, cool. Loud and clear. That's great to hear. And hopefully this stays like this for the rest of the stream. Um, no promises. I really am crossing my fingers and hoping for this one, though. Just getting everything loaded back in. Um, so real quick, hopefully this works. Uh, me too. I really hope so, because um, I'm really tired of dealing with your problems. Uh, but as you can see, we did some arithmetic operations, right? So you can do this with both things stored in variables, or in numbers stored in variables, as well as number not stored in variables. We try to do a arithmetic operation on, let's say, strings, right? For example, if I do strings plus a, so the string plus strings, and see that worked because we have added operations specifically by overloading the addition operator. But for example, if I do strings, this might also work because we might have overloaded things. And I'm about to explain what overloading means. If I do let's say string, I'll do mod by a a, right? This should like not work, right? So it says, yeah, so like uh file stdn argument not converted, can't uh not argument converted during string formatting, right? So uh what actually happens is when you put path asset a uh, uh, data type that it actually doesn't operate within that variable what it might try to do is convert it into uh, op uh, a data type that is operable through that oper operator and we're going to talk about what that actually looks like what that actually is and i'm going to be really really bold here and um resume my camera <laughs> i'm not sure if this will actually backfire on me but um welcome to the stream um so that being said we're going back to our slides so our assignment operator so uh, assignment, oh, ooh, that's a jump. Oh, no, that is. So, no, arithmetic operator. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, cool. Uh, can we get the background music? Can you, is it not on? Let me see. It should be on. No, it is not on. We can try to get you the background music. Will it backfire on me and delete the stream? Maybe. Okay, sorry. If it got loud for a second, I just had to flip the audio volume. Um, hopefully this is all remains smooth and this works. Um, I hope that resolves the problem. But yeah, so arithmetic operators, we just played around with them. We're gonna look at assignment operator, which is how you use the assigned values. We kind of used one of the most basic one, which is just the pure assignment operation, which is just the equal assignment. Uh, but there are other assignment operators out there, right? So we have either my slides are jumping or I'm crazy. Okay. So, ooh, so we are. We also have the plus equals, the minus equals, the multiplication equals, the divide equals, the mod equals, the integer division equal, and the uh, exponential equal. What that actually does is it performs the operation of the arithmetic, and then it does assignment at the exact same time. It essentially, just allows you to simplify your code down to one one line instead of two. So if you're trying to add to something but also assign it, you don't have to do the addition separately then do the assignment. Uh, wait, the line just shortens and we'll look at an example of what that looks like you can also use it with other operations such as um, bitwise uh, shifts as well as bitwise uh, uh, logical uh, operators uh, but those are really not important to us it is just not there for your knowledge shake so we're going to look at this real quick right so what we were kind of talking about in that situation was uh things that look like this, right so you can either remove Okay, there we go. So what we're talking about things that look like this, where you can either do, we have to create a variable. So you can either do it like this. So you can either say A is equal to, you can either do, let's say, I'm gonna say A equals to five, right? So if I just type A, it will essentially looks into A and prints out what is an A. So if I do A is equal to five, but I do, let's say A is equal to five plus A, 
we expect this to be 10, right? So if I do A, A is now 10, because we took one over to 5, uh, and we took one over to A, and then we added 5 to it. Another way to simplify this, what we were just talking about, is using the plus addition assignment operator, which will, by now, by default, take 5, add it to A, and assign it. So now if I left A, it will be 15. It just allows you to shortcut the code by, like, almost, like, just nothing. You just don't have to type in the A anymore, uh, because technically everything else is there. You just move the plus here, but there's just a, a quicker way to do assignment, and we need to do our operation with it. I'm going to go back to the slides and let's continue. So comparison operators. So comparison operators used to compare two values uh, or two variables. Uh, or compare the value of two variables or expressions, right? So this, again, it returns both true or false. You have your general logical operation that you have used in mathematical classes before, like equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, less than, or equal to, or greater than, or equal to. Um, but yeah, so that's your comparison operators where we will play with the, but I'm going to skip this actually. Because um they're not that uh they're not that hard to generally understand. We'll play with them together on a longer project uh basis. I don't know why there's just like one slide that's not loading, which which is perfectly fine for me. So logical operators, right? Uh logical operators expressions. Yeah, I don't know why we're just like we lost like this. There's one slide right here that you guys can't see. At least I can't see. I don't think you guys can see. Okay, so uh, we're going to go to logical operators. Okay. Logical operator. So it is used. Wait, do I have two logical operator slides? What is going on? Oh, I forgot to update those. So she has one slide. That's okay. So logic operators, uh, we don't have a slide for. I guess I made a boo-boo. Did not realize that. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to talk about expressions, right? So expressions essentially is a combination of values, variables. Um, yeah, I know. I think during upload, the slides really got messed up because you can see there's something called logic operator, but then there isn't. Um, so it is unfortunate, but that's okay. We're going to just move ahead over to expressions, right? So we're going to move on to expressions. OK, so expressions, right? So expressions are basically a combination of values, variables, and operators, and a function calls that evaluates a single value. So expression can be a simple value, or it can be more complex. For example, 1 plus 1 is expression. The slides are 100% messed up. Today is just not a good day. So use of these run so smooth, so I have actually like no clue what is going on. I really, I think it is legitimately just me, but let's see. I think this is good now. Okay, cool. Unless someone else is somehow uh, tripping me. Um, is it broken? Uh, yes, something is definitely broken, right? Um, don't know why it's acting like this. I'm actually going to do this. Remove, present, slides. I'm going to reload it into the database, and then hopefully this will self-resolve itself. Uh, it's uh, it's just jumping around. I'm not having a good day today. That's okay. You have your good days, you have your bad days, right? Chat. Okay. Okay, so expressions, right? So expressions is used extensively in Python and any other programming language, right? So you can also use interactive uh, mode in Python, which is Python's repel, which hilariously shares the same name, which essentially just means read, evaluate, print, uh, loop. Shell is like what the interpreter actually is when you, let's say, work with, within the console itself, right? That is the Python's repel, which reevaluate, print, loop, shell. Uh, but yeah, so uh, expressions can usually be entered directly into the shell to see the results from Indy. That's what we've kind of been doing, right? When we did like A is equal to five plus one, that's expression because it evaluates the one value. Uh, so expressions must always be on the right hand side of the assignment operator, right? So five plus, uh, five plus is the expression, the assignment is the operator we are utilizing. And A is the variable we're storing it in. And we're going to take a look at that more in depth in the coding process. Uh, we kind of already talked about some of the printing. Uh, okay, cool. So, all right. So, that is everything that was supposed to be in day one if um, there was no technical difficulties. And, um, oh, it's jumping on me again. This is some crazy stuff. Move. Somebody hacked. Uh, I don't think somebody hacked. Uh, because this is ran fully out of StreamYard, which means even if they hack, they have hacked the StreamYard. Uh, but I, I don't think so. 
I think it is just heavy lag. But yeah, so what we're talking about, right? So for example, in our case here, we're gonna actually look at the code we wrote yesterday. So our case, this is a, it's technically not an expression because it, it, I mean, you can consider it expression. It evaluates to one thing, right? So we asked for input, we gave it a strength and we added it to age. So a better example expression will be what we worked on down here, which is five plus eight. This is the actual expression. It's always on the right hand side the, of the operator. The operator here is the Simon operation, and then A is the variable. So we're taking the expression, evaluating it, store, and then storing it into A. But yeah, so let's let's look at this and continue to build upon some of the work we worked on yesterday. Uh, so we've looked at a lot more things uh, after uh, yesterday, which was today, right? So uh, we are going to actually cover the idea of typecasting. So we talked about how, let's say, when you take age in, right? When you actually take age input, what this always brings in, if you ever hover and you have some sort of like uh, smart uh, function thing, I forgot what this is called, like hints, essentially what it is, right? It tells you that input always turns a string. So like if you're trying to do ma mathematic or arithmetic operations on uh, numbers, you would want you wouldn't be able to use a string on it because you wouldn't be able to, to get the proper results, right? So for example, if I wanted to print instead of just the type of age, I'm gonna do um we use age and here. Okay, so your age is blank. Maybe I want to build on top of that, right? So maybe I wanna print. Uh, let's see, I want to print uh, as F string so it's easier to work with. Um, so I'm going to print, um, but your age in cat years, I'm going to put dog years because I don't know what the formula for cat year is. Dog years is, I'm going to put in, uh, in curly braces, right? So I can store a variable in there. Oh, F strings are down single quotes. Oopsie. I just need to make this into a single quote. I think you might be able to use it with double quotes too. I just usually do single quotes. I can use uh, double quotes in the actual string. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do age. But what you can do is you can also do mathematical operations in here. So I'm going to do age. Whoa. Oh, so you see, it, it told me the error, right? I was like, Back in this year, I totally forgot actually. Example of why it's so dangerous in Python is that I accepted it as an actual integer. So you can see it, it says I cannot add three to eight. I think the actual formula is like times four, right? So we're gonna do a multiplication by four. But you can see that it would go, yeah, oh, okay, times four works because it does something else. But if I did like plus, right, it says it's not because it's not operant. If I do this, it actually gives me now what I'm expecting, right? So I'm gonna print this out. So I'm gonna do ages, let's say, uh, age is 20, you can see that it became 20, 20, 20, 20, because the string operation uh, for the operator star just writes that string the number of time you multiply it by, which is exactly not what we're looking for. So what we need to do is the idea of typecasting. Typecasting is when you surround a variable of a type by the type you want it to be, right? So I'm gonna surround this by int, which is saying that, hey, before you perform this operation, I want you to try to look at the string and see if you can convert that string into an integer. Uh, and there, and that's already been coded in for you. So essentially using the int method to convert that string into integer. And we also talked about possible declaration of new variables with um, these um, methods slash function call versions, right? For example, if you want to create a list, you could just type list, right? It generates empty list. If you are trying to do a set, you can just type set, it generates empty set and so on and so forth. So now if I run this again, you can see if I do age of 20, I actually get the age of 80, uh, given the fact that now it knows to perform the proper mathematical operation of times four and um, not any other operations really. Um, so I'm glad this seems to be a bit more stable now and hopefully it stays like this for the rest of the way. Um, but yeah, so that is the idea of typecasting. You can do it with all sorts of variables. For example, I'm gonna do a, a quote, quote block. So we have int, right? We have lists, we have um, str for strings, we have dict for dictionaries, we have sets for sets, uh, and so on and so forth. And you can generally type pass with almost anything as long as the functionality is built in. Um, and then now we're actually gonna process to really what was supposed to be day two, which is when we kind of talked about control flow, right? 
So control flow of a program, if else uh, statement, it should be if, else if, and else statements. I need to update that too. Uh, loops, logics, and functions, right? So setting up Replit, we already did that. We talk about control flow. So there's a few types of control flow. We have sequential control flow, conditional control flow, and iterative control flow. And we're going to look at all of those. And to do so, we're actually going to break out. Normally, when I do this, uh, it goes a lot smoother, and we can actually uh, break out multiple tools. Um, hopefully, today, this tool doesn't actually freak out on me, because, um, you know, as we have seen, some stuff has been freaking out on me. So I want to break out, hopefully, this tool, and it just works without problem. It's one of my favorite tools to use, because um, it, it's like I have a whole whiteboard. Welcome to Paint. Right. So the first thing we're, we're going to actually talk about, which is the sequential type of control flow. So for sequential control flow, what that essentially means is given a block of code. So like, let's say this is a block of code. It will read the code line to line sequentially, right? Which means one after another. There will be no hops whatsoever. And what that kind of looks like is when when we write like, uh, let's Oop. I'm going to take, go here. You guys can't see what I'm doing, but this is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to grab this and then we will grab this code snippet. Uh, you'll see this right away really soon. So we're going to pop it in right there, right? So you can see this is a sequential flow because there's nothing that's making it hop around, right? You can see that it starts at this line of code, then the interpreter moves down to this line of code, right? So you saw that once I, it first asked me for age. After it gets age, it prints out that age. Then it does the age times four to get dog years. Then it asks me for a name. And then after that, I get the name, it prints out the name. And then it asks me for a movie and so on and so forth. So sequentially, it's flowing from one line to the other. That is the most basic flow when you don't add any type of modification. Uh, that is the flow you're generally working with. But the other flows that exist out there are on top of it, we have conditional flow, which is something we have not talked about, which is what, if you ever heard of a statement of if, um, let me zoom in a tap. If, else if, and else, right? So in Python, what we have is something called if, else if, or else. So we actually short in Python, we shortcut else if to just else if. I'm pretty sure we do. I just need to make sure this is not other little program language. I work in some languages I don't remember, and like when I actually just type it out, it's just kind of like natural. So I'm going to try this really quick. If a, l Oh, if, yeah, okay, cool. It is all, we're just making sure. Okay, cool. So, right, so what this means is you can have code that actually move around on conditions. So if the first block is true, so I'm gonna call A, if A is true, you would hop into a new code block that is nested in here. And then you can do additional condition, which is like L if, which means if A is not true, but B is tr true, it can hop into another code block. And then it else essentially is saying, if anything else that isn't A, or B, you can hop in the last code block in here. So what needs to be in, uh, what needs A and B in this case are essentially conditional statements, which means they evaluate, ooh, cannot spell condition, whatever, right? Conditional statements, and they evaluate to either true or false. So a Boolean value, so they evaluate to a Boolean, oh, also cannot spell. Boolean, and with that Boolean, we will then determine if we need to move into this code block, this code block, or this code block. And I should really be back, back and block, right? And what is cool here is that so for uh, for a conditional uh, type of control flow, you are allowed to with, have just the if statement, right? So you can just evaluate something is true and don't have an alternative case to consider and don't have a catch all case, which is your else, right? So this is your case. This is your alternative case. And this is your catch all case. And the reason it's called catch all case uh, because whatever doesn't ever pass your case or any of your alternative cases, 
it will just fall into your catch-all. So you're allowed to have one, you can have a conditional block of just one if, which means all you have is a case. You have nothing that you'd consider alternatively or trying to do catch-all. You can also have if with uh, one elif or as many elif as you want, essentially. So one or more, one plus, right? So you can have one if and one or more else if. You cannot have more than one if statement because if you have more than one if statement, all you're doing is you're declaring multiple uh, control, I mean, a, a conditional control flows, right? So if I have if and I have if, these are just two separate con uh, conditional control flows. And if you think about it, that makes sense, right? So if essentially is where you're telling it, here is start one for one for one iter one iteration of a control flow. And then another thing is your else statement, right? You can have if and else, and it just have those two. You can also have if and as many else ifs you want and else. Oops, I wish I that looked so bad. L if slash else. And you cannot just have an L if because this is the alternative case. You cannot just have the alternative case and else. You need to have always an if statement. And then after that, you can always choose to have an else or not. And if you want any additional conditionals, you would use L if. And now we're going to go look at this in action. And um and hopefully without any problems with that in action. So let's see. Oh, we're going to go back to share screen. We're going to bring up our code window again. All right. So hopefully you guys can see this. Welcome to the code window, right? So we're going to work with this. I kind of started this to tap it just to make sure that L if is how you tap it. Because in some program languages, you can program any other, you just have else if. Uh, but in Python, we're lazy. We just took steps to make it L if. So for example, if I start with just the L if, I will get yelled at because it will, it will go, hey, you need to start with an if statement. You cannot start with L if. So now we're going to do if, right? So maybe if um, someone's age is, okay, and here's, here's, so here's a really important part actually. Is we talked about what type of data ages, right? If I want to consider it as a number and utilize it as a number, I need to make sure I type cast it to a number. So I'm going to do int a input of age, right? So what this does is it takes the age from the user and the second it gets it, it'll convert to an integer and then store an age. So there is a lot of data validation if you do this for like an actual project or something, right? So what if the user don't give you something that can be converted into a number or integer? What do you do there? Um, there is validation you would have to do and check before it. So for example, there is uh, a method called, I think it's called, uh, there's a method for it. I forgot what it's called exactly. Is it called char to int? No, it's like to int. Sorry, was it two numbers? I can't remember anymore. It should it should pop up if it exists. So I think it, if it's I'm gonna do age dot to number but there's functions so if you do a really cool google you can look into methods that has been coded you can also code them yourself right so some of them what it utilizes essentially is like the type function we talked about you might check the type of the thing and then might check the data and see if it is an actual integer and if it is you know that it can is, is it, it is convertible right so you can look at each character individually to check if it is a number and if you see a string that is not a number you know that it is not convertible to integer but I'm going to assume the user is always going to give me the right thing. So I'm going to type cast it um, on the top. So whenever I actually get the string from the user, I just go ahead and type cast it to integer. So for example, maybe if you're um, younger than uh, 18, we can go. We're going to do this off of um, United States legal ages because I can't think of any. Hello. Okay, that was a bad sign. We were, we were cruising so, so smoothly until then. Uh, uh, um, can you guys hear me?
Just trying to make sure we're still live. Audio still coming through fine. Okay, so um, what's actually going to happen is we're going to lose my video again and see if this helps. Uh, um, I'm glad you can still hear me. I just, I, I hate my service provider. Okay, cool. So we're going to go here, right? So we're going to just print something really simple. Like, uh, I'm like, oh, let's just do, I don't know. Oh, you're 18. 18. Here's old. Uh, um, you are now of. Uh, your let's just do. Your, oh, you're 18 years old. I'm gonna do your. This doesn't even matter. You're so young. This is just an example, right? Legit doesn't matter. So if I I can just leave it like this if I want, right? So but if I leave it like this, if I actually run the code, right? So maybe I say I am. Um, Or if I if I say I am seventeen, it will say a, a name have oh whoops can't type uh, oh you are eighteen Hello, 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 hello. Well, hello. Um, Shunyar just kicked me out of the stream. Welcome back um, to myself. Uh, let's see. So we're going to get this back rolling as fast as possible and delay the amount of downtime we have here. And then, um, yeah, I really need to work on this and figure out what is going on. I'm going to get this back on and running. Welcome back to the stream. So you can see that if I, but if I run this again, and let's say I provide 18, you can see I no longer see. Oh, print your uh your uh, oh your oh your. Let's, I meant to do your younger than eighteen. I'm so young, right? If I do that, you can see that I don't get no longer get that statement anymore because I am no longer giving a number younger than eighteen. And for this is where you would uh, need, let's say, if I want additional statements, where like oh, I consider if they're younger than eighteen, and now maybe I want to consider if they are eighteen. So. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for all the rewards. Super cool. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know what is going on. I have done this for like a year, never had a problem. Upgrade my internet, and that apparently has been my de demise. Uh, but yeah, so like we're going to do LF, and let's say I can do age. 
and the age is equal, equal. So I'm doing comparison, equal, equal to 18. So I'm saying they're exactly 18. Um, I'm going to now do another thing. We'll be print some another statement, which is like print. Um, oh, nice. You are of legal age in the US, right? And we're going to do that. And then if I run, you can see that now, if I give it uh, anything below 18, I get the first statement. If I give it exactly 18, I get the second statement. If I give it anything higher than 18, though, I get nothing, right? Because I have nothing programmed in to catch that. I don't have a catch all or additional case. So to either fix that, right, to highlight this example, I can either generate another else if. I'm going to do age. And I'm going to do age is equal, equal to 19 and go. Well, I'm going to do 21. I'm going to go print. Oh, nice. You are now old enough to do more things, right? So now if I run this, right, if I run it for, we saw the last two cases. Now if I run it for 21, I will get like, oh, yeah, you're old enough to do more things. But if I run it for anything else, like 22, I get nothing. And the fixed side is what we're talking about where the else comes in, right? So we can have a catch all case. So like if anything else, I don't have to give it a condition anymore because it is a catch all. So anything that fails the first case and any alternative case uh, will fall into the else statement. So I can just do print. Oh, you're old. So if I run this now, you can see what will happen is if I give it an age anything below, I get my first statement, your first, uh, your first actual case. If I give it exactly 18, I get my second case. If I give it 21, I get my third case. If I give it anything else that is not less than 18 or 18 or 21, like 81, it says, oh, you're old. If I give it 22, it says, oh, you're old. But that's not, even, that's not true, but you get you get the gist of that and the point where I'm trying to present there. And with that, we're actually going to bring back our slides and hopefully smoothly without problem. Okay, I'm going to advance to control flow, right? So we looked over sequential flow, we looked over conditional flow, and now we're going to look over iterative flow. And what iterative flow will actually introduce is our concept of loops, right? The ability to repeatedly do something when a condition under certain circumstances. And um, there's one version where it's condition-based, condition, condition based, um, but you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, cool. So first things first, what we're going to do. It's been a while. Hello. Good morning. I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well as well. Um, having some streaming problems, some technical difficulties. Uh, I'm not sure why. I upgraded my internet, not downgraded it. And it's apparently upgrading your internet has uh, proved to be my um, demise or doing what, however you want to put it. But welcome. Glad to see you back the stream welcome to our basic python introduction course uh but yeah so let's come over here and play with iterative statements right so in python we have a few types of loops uh we have i'm gonna do this quote quote add a quote here oops i could not count oh. okay that's okay we will just do it the standard way which is like this okay and then we'll just go to this okay we have our for loops and then we have our while loops so how for loops work is there's a few version of for loop in python we have something of for each loop and that's in every other language it's true it's just one version and python we just for some reason decide to have two versions for each loop will essentially is a smaller loop it's a smaller loop as in there is less there is less problems it can solve and then for i loops, there is more problems it can solve. And then we have while loops. This solve the most problems. And what I mean by that is actually if things don't go to garbage can again, I'm going to bring up this nifty application what i like to call um 
the best of all applications, uh, which is our trusty friend Paint again. We're actually going to move this paint screen over here. I want to add this to the stage. Okay, cool. Right. So we're going to talk about this. So what I mean here is essentially is you can imagine there being circles, right? So here's our big circle. Here is our big circle of all problems in computer science. All problems. And then we have inside that, we have like a little circle like this, right? So let's say this little circle is, um, I actually, okay, we're gonna change it. So like this whole white paper, actually, I'm gonna make this a square. So I'm gonna do this. So you can think of this, this square is all computer problems that you can solve in computer science. I'm gonna remove this arrow. This erasing tool sucks, but that's okay. There we go, here we go, okay. And then, so this inner circle is all problems that is solvable by while loops. And then you think that there's actually an even smaller circle on the inside, right? We already saw that. So this is like, I'm gonna make this circle. These are bad circles, even though I'm using a tool. Don't worry about it. These are all problems that are solved by a for loop, but for i loop, which is essentially just iterative loop. And this is all problems solved by for each loop. That's all that what I was saying earlier was that in all problems solved by, solvable by computer science, uh, there is a, a subsection of the problem that are all, are all the problems that solved by a while loop, which is the biggest type of loop. There, and then there's a subsection that's all problems solved by an iterative for loop. And then we have something that's all solved by for each loop. And what the major difference between for each loop and for I loop is for each loop, you cannot make modification to the things you're looping through as you're working in it. Well, for I loop, you are allowed to make modification to the things you're working in. Uh, as you're working through it. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, so how you really will read or understand all of this is that for the outer circle, you can use while loop to solve all problems you can solve with a for iterative loop or for each loop. But for each loop cannot solve some problems that are solvable by a for i loop or a while loop. A for i loop can solve all problems that can solve it by for each loop and its own problem set, but it cannot solve some problem that is only solvable by a while loop. But this is what that looks like, right? And now we're going to look at that, what those kind of structure kind of looks like. So for each loop, essentially what you do is for the name of a variable you just make up here, and what it does is uh, name bar, it creates a variable for name bar in an iterative object. Okay, there we go. So what this means is that for each loop, you create, you give it a variables for each something in something, it will then iterate and become a part of it. What is an iterative object? Essentially, it's anything that you can iterate through, right? So one example is a list, right? So a list of lists of cat names or a list of pets, call it like cat, uh, dog, uh, bird, and so on and so forth. What this for loop would look like would be like, right, for pet, because that's like each of them could be a pet in pet. And what that means is, is I'm naming this pet, so this would be technically pets equals that, right? Um, and what this actually does is it will loop through, or it will iterate through the list called pets and set pet to each of them, right? So the first time it runs through this loop, you'll get a cat. Pet will become cat. So if I did print, right? If I wrote in this code print pet, what happens is, and your output, right? So here's our output. The first thing it will print out is cat. And then it'll print out dog, and then it'll print out bird. Why? Because what happens is, is as this loop is running, it will take pet, 
and it'll set it to each of the item that is iterable in the actual list pet. So you just get cat, dog, bird. Also, welcome, welcome to the stream. Glad you can join. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, the idea of a for each loop. Any questions? Questions about this before we move on to a for iterative loop? Pause for questions. No questions. Okay. Uh, no question. We're going to move over to a for iterative loop, right? So this is the easiest of all the loop. And it's easy to write, easy to use. For a for, for iterative loop, what that means is this is more, more of your more common loop style that you generally see in other programming languages is you loop through, but you loop through numbers, right? So what that means is you loop through more almost like indexes. Uh, what well, would you like indexing? So let's say, well, let's bring back our example of our pets list, right? So I'm going to create a list called pets is equal to uh, cats, dogs. Actually, I'm going to make it singular. There we go. Cat, dog, and let's say bird again. What we want to do here is it's, they're both four loops. So you start with four. But instead, you start with for i. And what i, essentially, it is a temporary variable that will just become an index of each part of list. So you do for i in, but instead you use a, a, a function or method called range. What range does is, uh, is it, it generates a range of the almost numbers, but they're technically range objects uh, between this, uh, between a given number, right? So for example, if I do range, of one, what it actually generate is zero. If I do range of two, it generates zero one. If I do range of three, it generates zero one two. Uh, so in our case here, what we want to do is we well, want it for a for i loop. It looks like for i in range of a number, right? So we know that this has three objects in it, and we know how in Python works is that we're in computer science in general, is that you start any iterative object at the index of zero and not one, which means it works great for us because if we do a range of three, we will get zero, one, two, which is the perfect indexes that we need. So for this one, it would, instead of looking, instead of just printing pets earlier, right? I just had to print pet, I can't just print i. If I print i, all I'm gonna get an output is zero, one, two. What we wanna do is we wanna print Hold on. We will want to print here in this case, actually the word pets with its index, right? So we talk about in list, when we're trying to access a specific thing at index, you would just use, uh, uh, I forgot what these are called, brackets, brackets, right? So we'll do print pets. And this will, instead of printing 0, 1, 2, it'll print, the same thing what we saw earlier, which is cat, dog, bird. And we see how like we use two different type of for loop to achieve the same purpose. And here is the mind blowing part. Instead of writing three here manually, what you normally do is you just write length, which essentially is a function that gets you the length of whatever iterable object you provided. We'll just write length, length of pet. And what that means is it will automatically go here and go three, and then it will count one, two, three, and then just set this number to three so I don't have to manually count it. So how generally how this would work is to write this really in like code scenarios before I in range of length of pets, whatever your list you're trying to iterate through. And then this will automatically achieve everything here without you having to manually write in this three. And then the inner code could be whatever you want, or it could be print again, right? It can be just print pets at one at index i's. So that is your four iterative loop. And then last but not least, uh, what we have and what we'll be looking at is a while loop. While loop is great in the sense that it essentially is while something is true, you loop. You execute code in the loop. That's really all that is for while loop. You can make this expression that it's considering as, as hard as you want. It could be as simple as you want, right? So for example, I can write 
while pet is equal equal to cat. I'm saying while pet is cat, you just go into this loop. The second that pet changes, it will stop the loop because right, this is no longer true. But what actually matters for you is remember that because we're using while the one of the most common mistake is not updating the value you're using for your conditional. So you go into what we call infinite loop where the loop never ends, right? Because the condition is never is never able to be made to be false, which means the condition is always true, which you run into infinite loop, which is not good. So just make sure if you use a while loop, you always make sure you're updating the condition as you're going along. So you don't run into that situation of infinite looping. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm really sorry for all the technical difficulties. I will be calling my ISP and heavily complaining on why an upgrade to my internet is actually a downgrade. Uh, so we're actually going to move on to our last stage of our time together for today. Uh, questions. Uh, so we're going to do part three of Introduction to Python tomorrow. We're going to wrap up some stuff we didn't get to cover. And then from there, we're actually going to do some fun coding and maybe put together a really simple exercise or project. Um, but yes, so don't be afraid to ask any questions. Do you, does anyone have any questions we can address about any of the content we went over today and the remaining 10 minutes that we have? Questions from chat, anything you would like. I think my camera might be working again, um, but it is a risk and we will take it. Okay, hello. Okay, any questions from chat? It could be on anything that you wanna discuss, talk about, any questions about today's content and so on and so forth. Chat questions, no questions. Everyone a, is a professional master of this content. Um, do, 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 do. If so, let me check one thing, which is, uh, actually I can probably just utilize this, which we're gonna go to everyone knows the url for um go hack week right it's just go hack ghw.mlhio and we'll look at schedule and we're gonna see what is coming up in the schedule let's see thank you chat chat what's up chat okay uh so what would you learn by the end of this hackathon this is 1099 hackathon it's our global hack week and in terms of python what would you learn uh, in Python, you're just going to really learn your basics. So understanding the data types and be able to make really simple programs. So today we kind of went over all your basic building blocks you need already, right? So we went over building blocks such as uh, data types, data uh, uh, operators you, you use with typecasting. Uh, we're going to go over, we went over iterative and different types of control flows. We went over the different types of uh, data, how you work with them. We're going to, tomorrow, we're going to put this all together and uh, essentially, now we have all the building blocks of all the type of control flow, which is sequential, uh, conditional, and uh, iterative. We're going to make a really simple program where we kind of take that all together. And we might either make like a Matlib or something really simple, maybe even like a calculator, and just package it really nice. Unfortunately, it'll be mostly command line programs, because those are really what we're at the level to be able to work with. In the future, if we actually had... Um, more time or would you like doing like a five-parter we might like learn the basic of python and then in the further parts uh we might like build out like a game with like some like python library or build out like a model or something uh but for today well we're really we're for this track which is really just really introduction to python uh will be just we learned a lot of the basic and then tomorrow is our last and final session we're going to put them all together and building out a really nice project that incorporates all the session, all the skills we have learned so far. So there's a few more topics I do want to cover. So I'm going to give you a real quick sneak peek, right? So like we want to cover maybe functions, right? What a function looks like, a control flow. Uh, I mean, control flow I went over. So really last thing is just functions. So you can functionalize your application and um, we'll show you some of the like, importing stuff and stuff. And then we're going to take all that, write a simple program tomorrow together. Um, but that is the objective for this. Um, and Today, there's three sessions. Today's the second session. Tomorrow will be the third. And I will hopefully fix my problems by tomorrow. And it seems to be more stable today as already um, compared to late to yesterday. So um, we're going to take another step forward tomorrow. Um, and then once it's all resolved, we just going to have our pretty smooth sessions. It's really, I don't know what's going on with my internet. 
Um, and I'm glad to hear that you like the you're new to the channel. This is exactly what the channel is for. If you need the schedule, uh, you can find out more about the schedule here at Global Hack Week Class Schedule. I'm gonna make a pitch for that. And there's also a lot of other fun stuff, right? So if you're looking for something that's more advanced, so technically after me today, we have Wikipedia mini race or mini event at 11 a.m. And then starting tomorrow's schedule, after that we have a day in Global Hack Week, which as that noon Eastern Standard Time today, and it will go over what we're, what we'll have tomorrow, right? So we have things like cryptocurrency 101. We have like the five layers of the internet model, right? So like the I uh the OSI model, the TCP IP stack model, and so on and so forth. We have machine learning tracks and all that. So there is more advanced stuff that Python might be used in. For example, if you're interested in more advanced usage, uh, you can look at machine learning because um, I'm pretty sure they use Python. Is the video? Yes. So the video for all this is in the schedule. And my actual recommendation, um, all the videos is always preserved. Um, and I run a Python track almost a lot of the time because I teach really just the beginning into Python. Uh, to, yesterday's video might not be the best one to start with only because of the technical difficulties. If you're just going to be watching the video, I do recommend maybe looking into uh, the Python track, not from this uh, Global Hack Week, but from the Global Hack Week priors. Um, yes, for sure, for sure. I hope you guys enjoy, and I do need to do a quick promotion. So the next thing that is coming around, right, so stick around uh, for... Wiki race at at um, eleven a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let me update this banner real quick. Give me one second, and we're gonna hit enter, save. Right, so we're gonna change this to so stick around for a fun Wiki race. Uh, Wiki race at eleven a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's actually one of my favorite mini events to even run. It is just full of a lot of fun stuff. Um, you get to do a lot of fun. Uh, thing and you can really see how good your um knowledge or how good your ability to branch off um uh, wiki pages are and essentially if you don't understand the concept essentially you start at one wiki page you have to turn into the other and because of how things in this world is basically so interconnected uh you can take jumps from one wikipedia page and hopefully end up in your project and you get scored based off the number of jumps you make so if you can do in the least number of jumps the more scores you have it's a really fun game i would totally join in if i wasn't stuck um doing other things yeah. Any other questions I can help address? Um, concerns, comments, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, we'll, 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 we'll reiterate. We're going to iterative improvement on this, right? So I'm going to update some of the slides to fix some of the issues. And then um, next time we might run a longer Python track. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to do a lot more, a lot more fun stuff. Any questions, concerns, explosives? And I do want to say, if um, let's see, I think the next um, Global Hack Week, because we have this all up, right, is open source. So maybe we'll start an open source Python project, where we'll work on an open source Python project after like we've done a bit of it. Um, but yeah. If no one has any questions um, before my internet decides to die, we're going to call it here for today. Thank you for everyone for joining me today and putting up with all the technical difficulties. We'll hopefully have them all worked out by tomorrow's session, 100%, actually, and not have any more issues. And with that said, I hope everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure you get some rest and stick around for Wikipedia race at uh, whatever o'clock. Have a nice day, everyone. Take care. Bye.